Yo, welcome back to another video. Um, today I just wanted to do a quick showcase of my latest project to finish. Um, this furnace array right here, it is 96 furnaces long, it only has 8 hoppers unlocked when idle, and stores minecarts um, completely locked or in dispensers. Um, and it has taken me two years to finish. Please don't laugh. Anyway, yeah, I've been working on this for a long time, trying to make it as good as possible, and working around all the bugs I've had to solve, so I thought I'd just do a quick showcase of it top to bottom. Alright, so the most basic part of it is these um, unloaders right here. So the hopper minecart will be sitting here. You can tell there's an activator rail so, because that's where the minecart will be when the system is off. And we want to make sure that's locked so it's not pulling excess items from the boxes, because we only want it to get a stack and 32 items to go around to match with the amount of furnaces we have. Um, so I have the layout somewhere, I think, for this. Yeah, down here. Um, or is it? It's this one. Um, so you have the minecart here, and it will pull items from the shulker. And then um, there's an activator rail below it. And for some reason, whenever this breaks, like we have a falling edge monostable right here to de detect that. It'll break and it'll power the activator rail for a second, and somehow that's long enough for the item to reliably get in the hopper. I don't know why this is reliable, it really looks like it shouldn't be, but it is. So, that's the circuit that I use for both the, um, the fuel and the item um, unloading. You have the fuel down here, um, but you may be wondering how these get over there. So. Whenever we um, turn this on, this clock goes back and forth, and it's synced to the amount, of the timing that it takes to unload that shulker, which sends the right amount of items around for the furnace. So this is completely clock-based. It's based on this clock right up here. Um, when this turns on, it will send a pulse, which will go all the way down here, and it will flick this trapdoor for a minecart to go around, up, over this rail, over this detector rail, and then get um, slime bounced up right here right up through the scaffolding. Um, this system is so compact I had to do it like that. So it goes through the scaffolding up onto that activator rail, gets the right amount of items, and then when it does, this fence gate is also pulsed with the timing of the clock, and it will go along. Um, and then when it comes back, it will go through this string, which will bounce it back up and through the scaffolding around and back to the magazine. And when you pass them over a activator rail like this, and put them into the magazine. They are currently locked as if they were just on this activator rail. So that's a pretty cool mechanic. And then whenever this is powered, um, it also gets one minecart out of this dispenser to go around and serve as the collection. So it'll go around and come back and then go into this minecart eater by its rich heart. The items will go along into this water stream down here and into these shulker loaders. So that's the basic function of it. Um, honestly, you could leave now if you don't care about the rest, but if you do, stay. I have some cool circuits I want to show you. If you want to skip to see the system working, just skip to this timestamp in the video. You don't have to watch the rest of the explanation. So if you're still here, that's pretty chill. Um, this is the layout I use. So you can see I didn't include the locking lines, but this has locking lines on the side. It actually um, sequentially unlocks, so whenever a cart is sent, it will unlock all of these with this latch. And it has the timing to go all the way around before it locks again. Um, and that is from this little pulse fader right here. Um, and that will reset the latch so that it's all locked again. So we have a latch for that on the outside, which locks all of these hoppers. And then you can see I have droppers in this layout. You may be thinking, why don't I just have the hopper where this dropper is and move the rail down? It'd be so much easier. Well, since this is Minecraft Bedrock, they decided that this minecart here can pull from this minecart here. Since that makes complete sense. So what I had to do is um, change it to this layout so that the collection didn't pull one coal from the fuel hopper minecart as it went around. So it was actually pretty simple to convert to this, so I kept the locking line for the fuel hoppers the same. So just a repeater line on top powering these blocks, 
when there's a glass block with dust below. And then whenever the minecart goes around, it will go down here and it will pulse this line twice. Since I actually cycle the fuel minecart around two times. Well, once, but normally it would just go off after this and end, but um, I launch it once every 16 times one of these item hopper minecarts go, instead of one every eight time. And, and I do this with this um, little clock right here, so when the amount of droppers go out, it will reset this latch that controls um, the sending of this hopper minecart. And um, it'll go around putting one in each hopper, and then it'll come back and go around again putting another in each hopper. And that's why we pulse it twice. But yeah, you can see the layout is pretty simple. Um, there's obviously rails on these hoppers here. Alright, another thing I bragged about is that this only has eight hoppers unlocked, and all of those are in the unloaders here. I could not lock them. Um, most of the unlocking is controlled by this slider. So whenever we turn it on, that will go down. And um, all of these unlock. I've wired it with um, lime, glass, and concrete, so it's easy to see. And then frog lights wherever there's torches, because reducing light level updates. Um, so we have a lot of unlocking all around here. Just, uh, well, locking around here just to make sure it's as lag efficient as possible large scale, because that's a lot of hoppers that you would normally have unlocked, and I don't like that. Um, so we have those, like I said, we obviously have that clock. Um, the layout here is we have the chest with the simple unloader over here, since we had to go lower. Um, there's an extra hopper behind this observer right in there, and then one below this barrel. I lock both of them by powering the barrel. and. The circuit that um, powers the trapdoor to release the minecart is controlled by this observer. And if this dust wasn't redirected by this um, detector rail, it would power this block and occasionally it just spam the locking. And that's not good. So I redirected it like that. Pretty simple. Um, and then both of these unloaders actually have um, initial box detection. So if there's nothing in the system, they will put a box into the system automatically when you input it. Thanks for the help by Baden for that. Um, that's what both of these comparators are for. And then we have this falling edge monostable to help with that. Um, and then you may be wondering what this observer line is. I know it's a lot of redstone at once, and I'm just sort of explaining it spaghetti way, but eh, I didn't put any thought into this video. So whenever this machine is turned off, um, this falling edge monostable will activate. It will pulse up through here, all the way up, and then it will power the circuit that sends off this hopper minecart and put another in. So what this does is it prevents the timing getting thrown off by a hopper minecart sitting in here when it turns off and then getting reactivated. So the hopper minecart here gets sent around with like some items left, and then this rail is already locked by the time the next hopper minecart comes in. So we don't have to worry about getting too many items in one hopper minecart. Um, and then we actually recycle all of the boxes that we use and put them back into the um, loading circuit right here. So you can see they actually filter in from this chest and they come out from both the item shulker and the fuel shulker. So they're both aligned by stairs, and then if you don't know, brewing stands will give items momentum if aligned to the corner. So Totem and I made this one wide water stream to make sure we kept the footprint of this build at 8 wide, because I think it's just cooler that way. So they'll slide down these brewing stands, both of them, and it will get aligned by this fence gate and drop down right past where the collection goes, and then it will fall on this brewing stand, it'll get aligned into that anvil by this small water stream off to the side. It's very janky that it's just floating there, yes, but it's pretty funny. It'll get aligned against the anvil, and then go into the hopper. If the hopper's full, it'll get um, aligned against this fence gate by this water, 
go against this brewing stand, and then go to the extra shulker output. So we have preventative measures for that. Um, this farm actually, this furnace array actually has a lot of preventative measures. Um, so I lock these hoppers in the uh, in the loaders when idle. But the problem with that is, if you lock them too early, they'll get backlog and they'll activate when they're not full. So I have a circuit for that. I built this with Kyrie. Thanks to him for that. Um, so there's that waterlogged comparator way up in there. You see it um, reading that first hopper, and that powers a torch. This torch powers a clock right here. So whenever that first um, loader, which will always have the most items because of how it's placed, um, is still, still has items in there, it will clock this rail line which doesn't interfere with the item stream. It will go across here and activate this pulse extender. And this keeps, like, this Fortic repeater keeps it permanently powered for the most part while there's items in there. And it will lock this repeater. So when the system is on, this repeater is powered, and these lines do not lock. When it is turned off, though, we want to keep this turned on, even though this line is turned off. Um, until the items are finished loading. So we power it from the side to lock it, and whenever items are out, this pulse extender will stop. We'll stop getting a pulse into this repeater, and then the system will lock. So we have that as a preventative measure. Also, um, I use observers detecting dust as a measure for making this um, circuit right here to unlock all the hoppers easier. But the problem with that in Bedrock is whenever um, observers see powered dust upon relog or upon re-entering the area, they will automatically pulse. It is a bug, and it should not be in the game. But just to make sure we don't run into issues with that, I have an observer here with a redstone dust. Whenever you reload, it will power this, and it will always send the item back up into this top dropper. So no matter what state this is in, if it's on or off, whenever you reload, it will be reset. And then the last preventative measure I have is right here. If any items somehow manage to get all past all four of these, which they usually won't, but if that ever happens, they will hit this string, and since they're aligned sort of over the hopper, they will get bounced back by this slime block. So they'll pass over the hoppers again and again until they are eventually loaded. So there's no loss, there's no bad things that happen upon relog, um, and you can't break the um, loaders. But if you build this in survival, it does have to be, you should wire this to a indicator lamp off to the side that tells the player, don't leave the area, bad idea. And then one last thing, I'd like to show you how the unlocking works for the um, line that powers all of the fuel hoppers. So the locking for this is really simple. It doesn't require any extra circuitry. This was developed with Schmo, and it's really funny. Two detector rails, a latch. When it passes over, it moves the item into the back dropper, and all of these unlock. And then when it comes back, it'll move it into the back dropper again. I mean the front dropper, and all of these will lock again. It's that simple. The only thing that breaks it is if you happen to um, turn off the farm while the hopper minecart for the fuel is out, it will leave the item in the back dropper, and these won't lock again, so it's just something to look out for, but it's really no problem. So with all of that shown, uh, I think it's about time we actually turn on the system to show it working. All right, so it's all controlled by this one lever, and when we flick it on, we'll see it working. So first we're going to get a hopper minecart that goes up into here. You can see the fuel minecart's going by. So we have a hopper minecart that's collecting the right amount of items. And then you'll see this line unlock as it gets sent. And it will go on its merry, merry way. So all of those furnaces are working. I have them um, using up smooth stone right now. So they'll all go along, and then they'll get bounced back up. 
and put it back into the magazine. There are no items left, there never will be, because I have it timed perfectly. And you can see the collection hopper going along, collecting all of those items that were just smelted. And it will go across this funny rail line down in there, and then into the yeeter. So all of the items move along, they get aligned, and they will go into the loader. You can see the pulse extender activated with that because all of them went to the first hopper. But yeah, that's the system working. Um, hope you enjoyed this explanation, even though I kind of just threw it together haphazardly. Um, and I'll probably make a bit more content on this soon because I think it deserves a proper showcase. Thank you for watching.